On today's show, I'm going to give you 10 reasons to believe in the New York Mets this season. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, Mays and Mets fans, you're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan, but also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. And this was supposed to be opening day for the New York Mets, but unfortunately, we all have to wait a little bit longer. There was a ton of rain in the forecast today, so the Mets decided to push the game back to Friday. This is why they have the off day after opening day to allow teams to still get their full festivities in, their, their normal opening day schedule without having to talk about a doubleheader or a canceled game. That's why they put the schedule this way to start every single season. It's still not fun. It, 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 we all want to be watching Mets baseball today, but as much as I'm upset about that, I also am very happy the Mets got out in front of this. Would have been a lot worse if we were expecting opening day and then there was delays and the game got pushed back an hour, then two hours. We're watching amazing finishes, 1998, whatever it is on SNY, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And then eventually they call it and you know, everyone's time is wasted. So I'm glad that we just have to reframe our minds. Opening day is now Friday, 1.40 p.m. against the Brewers. And we'll go from there. A couple other news items, some notes here. DJ Stewart officially made the team. Uh, we all expected this one. The Mets did not announce it until Carlos Mendoza met with the media just because uh, a trade can happen late. You could pick up somebody that another team wanted to cut. And we saw a trade not quite of that ilk uh, on uh, on Wednesday here with the Yankees because I think the Marlins absolutely would have kept John Birdie, but the Yankees wanted him, give them another option at third base. They swing a deal and... That's a fantastic day for the Mets to get rid of John Birdie in this division. He has been a Mets killer whenever he's been with the Marlins here for the last couple of years. So awesome to see him go over and play for the Yankees. Who cares? At least he's no longer going to tournament the Mets for however many matchups they have this year. Was it 14 games uh, against the Marlins? Now you don't have to worry about him. Also, Kodai Senga began his throwing program. He played catch at City Field. That was his second time playing catch. Carlos Mendoza said he is one day on, one day off, so I imagine continue to play catch throughout the rest of the week, eventually start throwing on a flat ground, then you build them up to throwing uh, you know, bullpens off the mound, off the slope, then all of a sudden you throw in some live batters, then we'll get a rehab assignment. It's going to still take some time, but at least he's throwing, and so far, so good. Nothing is really limiting him up to this point. He just has that long road to ramp up. Let's now talk my top 10 now. This is an article that's going to go up on Friday at JustBaseball.com. I wanted to coincide it with opening day, and the opening day has been pushed back a day. But we're going to detail the whole list here, and this is a 10-to-1 list. So this is ranging by levels of importance. We're going to start with the, the reason that I think is least impactful and finish with the one that I think is clearly the most impactful. So we kick things off with number 10, the right rookie manager. Managers aren't going to change everything. Okay, We saw Buck Showalter comes in. He's the best manager for the Mets. They won 101 games. Everyone is singing his praises. He wins manager of the year. And then year two, he scapegoated a little bit as the team did not perform. The players ultimately decide things, but I do believe it is, it is important to have the right hand on the wheel. And I love everything I've seen from Carlos Mendoza up to this point. I think back to last year where Skip Schumacher took over the Marlins and they went on the run that they did to make the playoffs. Rocco Baldelli back in 2019 with the Twins, they had a great season. Those are rookie managers who won manager of the year. I think that could happen with Mendoza, but here's a little tidbit that I've loved. There's a buzz phrase that's been going around, around camp, and I have to guess this has come from Carlos Mendoza. And it's about getting through this season and they're always describing it as getting through 162 plus. It's always 162 plus. Setting that expectation that the New York Mets are going to be a playoff team. 
I think Mendoza has a great feel for his clubhouse right now. I think he's the perfect manager for some young guys that are, that are in the mix. And also maybe to give even a little more authority to the veterans. Now that Buck Showalter's not there, maybe Francisco Lindor and Brandon Nemo have to take what they learn from Buck and step up even more as leaders in that clubhouse. So I, I really do believe in Carlos Mendoza as, as the Mets manager. Granted, I'm sure you can go back five years ago to 2019 uh, at times when the Mets are doing well where I might have believed in Mickey Calloway. So it's always tough to tell with a manager, but right now at this moment, I do believe they have the right rookie manager for this job. Number nine on my list here, top prospects are close. Are Drew Gilbert, Luis and Helicuna, Jet Williams, Christian Scott, Mike Vassell, Dom Hamill, are any of those guys going to completely swing the tides of this season? That's asking a lot. But can they at certain points come up and play a role? Can Christian Scott, when the Mets maybe need a starter for a month, come up and make four starts while he still has innings to pitch this year and surprise the league because no one's seen him and give you some dominant efforts? I think that can happen. Can Drew Gilbert at some point this season assume a starting role in that outfield? I think there's a chance that he does. Maybe down the stretch, Drew Gilbert does play a big role for the Mets down the stretch. Can Luis and Helicuna step in when somebody goes down and give you a spark plug in the lineup at some point this season? I think there's a chance. And then Nate Lavender is not your you know, typical top prospect, but I do believe he's going to be an impact player in that bullpen this year. So I think the Mets farm system is getting better and better. I did touch on Mike Vassell's name, but I didn't mention that I think he could also be a guy that gives the Mets more starting pitching depth. And so because of that, because of all these different top prospects that I think could help out, that's going to ultimately provide this team the depth that they need to really, you know, survive the 162 plus, right? Speaking of depth, that's number eight on my list, starting pitching depth. That's a reason to believe in the Mets this season. Look at some of the other teams in this division. The Phillies, the Braves got depth. But the Phillies, the Marlins are seeing their depth tested. Or even if you look around the National League, look at the Padres right now or the Giants. There's not a lot of teams that have a 1 through 10 on their depth chart. I feel like the Mets have that. I, I really do. They have a lot of different arms that they can go to. They're starting the year with Luis Severino, Jose Quintana, uh, you know, Sean Mania, Tyler McGill, Adrian Hauser, Jose Budo's waiting in the wings. But they're going to get Kodai Senga back. They're going to get David Peterson back. That right there gets you to eight. You still have Joey Lucchese as nine. Max Kranich is 10. We'll see how long he stays in the organization as he's dealing with, what was it, a hamstring injury? So we'll see him rehab, get back if he does find a role um, on this Mets team somehow. But even beyond that, then you have those pitching prospects. So I even look at this depth and it could even stretch a little beyond 10. I really think that any of Vassal Scott or Dom Hamill could contribute to this team this year. So I really like the overall depth the Mets have to be able to deal with injuries and have good options to plug into the mix. Uh, so I don't think you're going to see a Jared Eikhoff making a start. Shout out to, what was that? 2021 New York Mets, Jared Eikhoff. Number seven on my list here. Positive regression. I think that's a big reason to believe in the New York Mets. I don't think Sterling Marte is going to be as bad this year. I don't think Jeff McNeil is going to be as bad this year. Getting some positive regression from guys like that, even someone like Omar Narvaez, who had a weird season last year with injuries. He's not going to have a huge role, but as a backup catcher, can he provide a little bit of something for you? I think he can. So you look at all these different guys, even Harrison Bader, Luis Severino, guys they brought in to have some positive regression. I think you're going to see a lot of these players play a little bit closer to the back of the baseball card, and the main two are, are Marte and McNeil. If you get 80% of the versions you saw in 2022 with Marte and McNeil, that's going to really change the equation because I think the Mets right now, especially in that starting lineup, Lindor, Nimmo, no questions. Alonzo, Marte, no questions. And then it probably is McNeil, Marte. Obviously, Alvarez could bump one of those guys down the lineup a little bit. But those two, if they are looking like themselves, if Starlin Marte is hitting 280 and he's swiping a ton of bases, which I think he still can, 
I don't know if he's going to pop 20 home runs. I sort of doubt that, but could Starling Marte give you 13 home runs, you know, 30 doubles, and 45 stolen bases while hitting to a much higher average than he did last year, getting on base at a more reasonable clip? I'm not expecting 350, but can you give me 325 and overall just be a much more, for one, healthy player, but a, a positive impact in that lineup. He doesn't have to be batting second and be a huge spark plug catalyst. He's just got to be a lot more consistent. I think he can do that. And Jeff McNeil, he's sort of on year, off year, Jeff, at this point. So is this an on year? Because if it is, we know that Jeff McNeil at his best can be an all-star. can be a guy that can hit 320. So if you get some positive regression from those two guys, that's going to move the needle. And I believe you're going to see that. And we still have six more reasons to believe in the New York Mets this year. I'll get to number six next. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you, especially opening day. If you're still trying to make it out to the game now on Friday, you can look on Game Time right now. And I am seeing at time at the time of recording here the cheapest ticket at $30. That's in the promenade section of the outfield there. But you can even look and see some good seats in the 300 section for 100 bucks a pop. Here's one, uh, 92 A lot of value you can find at game time. And these tickets are only going to get cheaper. Game got rained out. There's, I'm sure people who are now, you know, who were planning to go to the game on Thursday, they're now to try to go on Friday. They might be looking to sell. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you the complete peace of mind in your purchase that allows you to buy tickets all the way up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. So if you want to go to opening day, game time is the place to go. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. And for a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with the code first pitch terms apply. Again, that's code first pitch for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Number six on my reasons to believe in the New York Mets this year, it's outfield defense. And it could be defense overall, but I wanted to focus specifically at the starting outfield. Last year, we saw Tommy Pham out there, Mark Canna, saw Brandon Nimmo in center field. We saw Starling Marte beleaguered by injuries. Did I use that word right? Beleaguered? I think so. Uh, we just saw a rundown outfield. And I did this on a show uh, earlier this offseason where I compared last year's outfield to, to 2022, and the defense was one of the things that took a hit. Brandon Nimmo still was respectable out there, but he was nowhere near as good as he was in 2022. Now Nimmo shifts over to left field. And I think that's going to be great for him because, for one, we all know he's got a little bit of a noodle of an arm out there. That's not going to be as much of an issue out in left field. I think his range is going to play up really well. I think he's going to stick out and left pretty much full time. Because if you look at the center field depth chart, Harrison Bader is going to be in a lot of games. And when he's not, Tyrone Taylor can be the starting center fielder. And when it's not those two, if the Mets eventually get to a point later in the season where they decide to move in a different direction, I already alluded to Drew Gilbert. He could be the starting center fielder and might be the center fielder of the future. Jet Williams could be the starting center fielder and the center fielder of the future. Those things might not happen this year. I think Jet is a little less likely than Drew Gilbert. But with that still said, I think Nimmo is going to basically find his home back in left field. That's always where he should have played. Granted, he did an amazing job making himself a solid defensive center fielder. And look, if the Mets get to a point this year, where they need another bat. They're at the trade deadline. They decide to swing a deal for a big left fielder. Maybe it does end up back in center, and I think that that would be okay if the offense sort of necessitated that move, if you needed that bat and left. But to me, outfield defense is how this team is really going to steal some games. When you have a Harrison Bader out there with the ground that he covers, and there's going to be games where you got Tyrone Taylor and Wright. He covers a lot of ground. He has a cannon of an arm. And not to mention, a healthy Starling Marte is going to be a massive upgrade over himself last year when he wasn't right physically. That defense out there is going to be big. And I really think that is sort of why they built the pitching staff the way that they did. 
They got a lot of guys that they're hoping can at least keep the ball in the yard that might pitch the contact, hopefully not walk too many guys. And all of a sudden, as I've alluded to in past shows, you could see Tyler McGill or an Adrian Hauser or even a Jose Quintana where their actual ERA is 3.50, and then we'll look behind the curtain at their expected ERA, and it's like 4.6, where they should be giving up way more runs because balls are getting hit hard off the bat, and guys are just running down those fly balls. So I think outfield defense is a big reason to believe in the New York Mets. Now we're getting to the top five. This is where I think it gets really good. And you know what? On the fly here, I, part of me wants to move my list around. I'm looking at it. I feel like it's more impactful than I have it, but now I'm looking at the top four. And you know what? I'm going to keep the list as is. It's just really impactful. Number five is the return of Edwin Diaz. That's going to be so massive for this team. It was one of those things last year that I think all of us tried to bury our head in the sand and pretend like it wasn't a big deal when he went down. All right, they got David Robertson. They got Adam Adovino still. They got Brooks Raley. They, they still have this starting rotation that should be outstanding with Scherzer and Verlander and Kodai Senga. And then I remember the Justin Verlander injury on opening day. I was in the garage at Marlins Park, me and my dad going to the game, and I find out, oh, Verlander's out. He's not starting game two. And all of a sudden, things started to change, and obviously a lot went wrong last year. But the first thing that went wrong was losing Edwin Diaz. Having him back is going to be not only a big lift for this team in the ninth inning, but I think it's a big mental lift for this team. I think it helps just the overall psyche of this roster getting through games where you know, all right, you got a one-run lead in the seventh inning, buckle down, you hold on to that, and you got nails coming out for that night to shut the door. The trumpets will play. I think that's going to bring a lot of energy to the ballpark. It, it just feels like Diaz coming back could be a return to – the good times that Mets fans got to feel in 2022. I really hope that's the case. Number four on this list, before we will close with our top three, Francisco Alvarez. This is a bold prediction. It's also a reason to believe he will be an all-star this year. I am all in on Francisco Alvarez. He is the budding face of the New York Mets. Obviously, you still have Lindor. You still have Nemo. Hopefully, beyond this year, you'll still have Alonzo. You can have a lot of different players who are, quote-unquote, the face of the franchise. But I think Francisco Alvarez, as a homegrown stud, who could ascend to being one of the best at his position, he's already top 10 by a lot of people at just baseball. I believe we ranked him at number 9. Though in retrospect, I would have wished we had bumped him above Gabby Moreno because I think Alvarez just has more upside. It was a little bit more based on what they did last year, and Gabby Moreno's defense was just to a different level. And then, of course, you give him the playoff tax. Helps you know bring the team to the World Series in Arizona. But to me, Francisco Alvarez is going to just take off this year. I, I've mentioned it on many shows. I talked about it just yesterday in my bold predictions. But when you look at the work he did to improve this offseason, how that's going to already translate on the field and the fact that he's just another year older with a full tour of duty under his belt. Sky's the limit. I think Francisco Alvarez is going to be a big reason for this team to exceed expectations in 2024. With all that said, I still have three more reasons to believe in your New York Mets this year. We'll get to them in just a minute. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Testing your skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps because it's daily fantasy sports made easy where you pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Right now, you can even look up MLB season stats by finding the MLB season tab that's MLB SZN. There you can find Francisco Lindor's projections on hits at 149 and a half, take more, of course. Brandon Nimmo, home runs, or excuse me, multi home run games. That's at 0.5. I believe home runs, I saw at 20.5. Edwin Diaz's saves at 32 and a half. So you can pick more and all those, combine them, win big by the end of the year, or just during the season, game by game, you can play over at Prize Picks. Download the app today, use the code locked on MLB, that's all in lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, down the prize picks app, 
Use the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. Tomorrow is opening day, which makes now the absolute perfect time to become a locked on Mets insider. This is our texting service where you get updates from me anytime. So news breaks on the Mets it's where you can ask me questions anytime. It's where we'll be sending out the lineups to you every day. So you get a text message with a graphic that shows you who's in the starting nine. It's also where you can take part in our Locked on Mets signed giveaways. If you want to be a Locked on Mets insider, find the link in the episode description. Go to subtext.com slash Locked on Mets. Now I have three more reasons to believe in the New York Mets this season. These are my top three reasons to believe. Number three, consistent franchise cornerstones. And of course, I'm talking about Francisco Lindor and Brandon Nimmo, the two guys that are on the longest term contracts on the Mets books here. Look at Francisco Lindor the last two seasons. 161 games started in 2022, 160 games started last year. 2022, 26 home runs, 98 runs scored, 107 RBIs. Last year, 31 home runs, 108 runs scored, 98 RBIs. He also nearly doubled his stolen bases with the new rules, went from 16 all the way up to 31, which is a career high. And you look at the WRC plus, which measures hitters on a league average of 100. He had a 125 WRC plus in 2022 and a 121 WRC plus in 2023. So he's basically now becoming about 20% better to 25% better than your league average hitter year in, year out. Always great defensively. He's put up huge war totals throughout his career, which puts him on a Hall of Fame track, war being wins above replacement. 2022, he was a 6.6 win player. Last year, a six-win player. Again, all of that with a bum elbow. And you even look at the OPS consistency. He had a 788 OPS in 2022. Last year, got that OPS back over 800 for the first time since 2019 at 806. I know that Lindor is going to be in the lineup every day. I know he's going to give you great defense at shortstop. I know he's going to probably hit at least 25 home runs, if not pushing beyond 30 again. And now I expect him to steal these 25 bases all while driving in a ton of runs and scoring a ton of runs. He is a huge, huge reason to believe in the New York Mets. And Brandon Nemo's right there with him. Brandon Nemo over the last two years, the batting average, identical, 274, 274. The on-base percentage, within four points of each other in the 360s. The slug, he actually added over 30 points last year because he went from 16 home runs to 24 home runs. He's going to score runs. He'll drive in some over 60 runs driven in the last couple of years. That's not bad at the leadoff spot. And he had a 5.2 F4 in 2022, a 4.4 F4 last year. I think he's always going to be at least a four-win player for you, or at least for the foreseeable future. And at his best, he can get that win total over five. But I know he's going to give me good at-bats at the top of the lineup. I know he's going to score runs. I know he's going to run into his homers. And he's going to play steady defense out in left field. Those two guys consistently day in, day out. Also for Nimmo, over 150 games played the last two years. So being able to get on the field as well, which it's crazy to now look at Nimmo and say, yeah, that's a dependable guy. But here he is the last two years. He's really done it. So those two are always the reason to believe in this team because they give you a really high floor at some premium positions. Now, number two is Pete Alonso and more specifically, Pete Alonso has protection in a contract year. Go back across Pete's career. When has he had the most protection in the lineup? Was it 2022 with Daniel Vogel back in the second half? Was it 2021? Who was hitting cleanup for that team? I don't know. Did Javi Baez hit cleanup at some point? I don't even remember who was batting cleanup on the 2021 Mets. And then 2022, 2023, Pete Alonso did hit cleanup. Uh, a ton, and that's where Vogelback came in last year. We saw a bunch of guys in and out of the lineup. From my memory, I would say the best protection Alonzo has ever had was in 2019 with Michael Conforto. That's my guess. That year, Conforto started 60 games, batting four, 31 games, batting third. I know Alonzo spent a lot of that year in the two or three hole, so it makes sense that for the most part, Conforto was batting behind him. And Conforto that season had 33 home runs and drove in 92. He was in the lineup for 151 games, had a really nice season. That's my guess for the best protection that Pete Alonso has ever had. Now you look at J.D. Martinez as his protection. And pitchers fear 
JD Martinez. He has that track record. He's done it year over year over year. Look at his career numbers. Okay. He's a career 287 hitter with a 350 on base and a 524 slug. That's a career 874 OPS. That's a really good hitter. He's driven in 100 runs a ton last year, driven 103. 2021, he drove in 99. And then he had a three year run from 2017 through 2019, where he drove in at least 100 runs every single season and drove in 130 back in 2018. Having JD Martinez hit behind Pete Alonso means more pitches to hit. And on top of that, Pete's in a contract year. So I believe Pete's going to have the type of season where he could put the lineup on his back and carry them for large stretches, especially when you have a consistent guy behind him to pick him up. So when Pete isn't able to drive in that run, he always knows the guy that's bad next can get that base knock to get that in that run in from second. So to me, that is the biggest on field reason to believe in the Mets this year. It's that power production combination in the middle of that lineup of Pete Alonzo and J.D. Martinez. This leads me to number one on my list for the most important reason to believe in the New York Mets this season. That is to trust David Stern's process. I believe in David Stern's as an executive. There's a reason that I was banging my hand against the table for years. Banging my hand, banging my fist is probably the proper way to say that one. Pounding the table with this old fist of mine saying, get David Stearns. He is the answer to all of the questions that we've had about the Mets front office for years. He is the stable guy that can come in and take this franchise towards sustainably winning. And I think that can start this year. I really do. The way they have constructed this team, if you think about the holes that this roster had, Stearns came in, he cleared the deck on the 40. The Mets started over in a lot of respects as far as that 40-man roster construction. Obviously, there was holdovers. You had some nice pieces to build around. But when it came to the starting rotation, the bullpen, all of that had to be pretty much built from the ground up. They had Sanga Quintana, but they needed a lot more. They had an Edwin Diaz and, and, and Brooks Raley, but they needed a lot more. And now I look at those units, and while they might not be on paper the same that they had in 2022 or you know, on paper going into last year, I feel like he just answered so many questions about depth, and he got around some problems creatively. You're not finding the value one in the starting pitching market for agency. What do you do? All right, well, you pick out the best bounce back candidates that, that you can find, the guys that had the best stuff that could translate. Luis Severino and Sean Manaya. I think those guys have a chance to have really good seasons. Okay, you, you need to build out a bullpen. You get first quantity and then quality. So you really round out that pen, put it in a good place. How are you going to deal with run prevention? You got to have a good defense. You trust the bad star in house to carry that offense. You need to have a good defense behind them. You get Bader, you get Taylor, you get Joey Wendell, even you pick up Zach short when he's available on waivers. Everything was focused on defense. And then when you believe in your defense and you think your pitching might be good enough, and you have a chance to sign a great bat at the end of the off season, you wait it out and you land J.D. Martinez to give your entire team a shot of adrenaline. Because Carlos Mendoza said it today. He said the locker room felt different once the J.D. Martinez news happened. It felt like a team now that can really win. I feel like it's been a quiet offseason in some respects, especially compared to what we watched the last two years. But it was a very effective one. And I think the Mets are in a really nice spot to be able to have a good season, a productive season. And I also think not that you want to believe in a team that would eventually sell, but just again, to trust David Stern's process. If this year doesn't go as planned, I trust how he can pivot because you have a lot of pieces now that would be attractive come the trade deadline. If this season didn't go as planned, but I believe it will because of all 10 reasons that I outlined, because I think that this roster is very complete despite maybe the lack of absolute top-end talent, particularly in that rotation. But I think they have enough to get the job done and be a playoff team this year. And I cannot wait for it all to start. 
We all just have to wait a little bit longer. Tomorrow's show, opening day preview. We'll be breaking down the matchups. Hopefully, we'll get a finalized roster on Thursday so we can talk about that bullpen decision that the Mets have to make. And then that'll be it. It'll be play ball, and we'll just get into covering games throughout the rest of the year. I also want to let you all know I will have a show, possibly a live stream. I'll have to figure that one out. But I will have a show after opening day on Friday. If you want to make sure you don't miss that on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast side, follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. You can follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen or your first watch every day. Now for your second watch, head over to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, the first ever 24-7 streaming channel that covers everything in the world of sports. Locked On, Locked On Sports Today has our local experts from each team and our league-wide experts from each league. You'll find Locked On Sports Today streaming 24-7 on YouTube.